artist assemble the secret sauce to making your artwork from ooh what's that brother to ooh that's it brother bad blending can lead to a strong urge to throw your artwork out of the window but you are a digital artist how could you do that leave it put down your fears and listen up we are going to spill the beans on top five ways to achieve smooth blending and professional rendering so let's dive into the sauce first master your blender first add your desired color and select your trusted blender you have to select hard charcoal from charcoals folder this is my favorite personal blender adjust these settings and make sure that sample layer toggle is off go to opacity option and adjust these settings hard charcoal is an excellent choice as it blends colors effectively when used correctly hmm nice you can achieve smooth blendings if you randomly add your strokes and blindly blend the colors, ending up with over blending and uneven finish. Let me show you how to do this. Place your brush on a specific color and pull your stroke and observe how color is pulled forward. Now repeat the process using different color and observe how blending responds when changing the placement of stroke. Now what you need to do is add a stroke in between these two colors until a transition color is created. Don't use a single stroke instead mix it up with different strokes each time. Now you have created a gradient between these two colors. Now you can see these two distinct lines. You need to blend these lines. Start by blending the lighter color line. Then move on to purplish line. If you notice any other distinct line, blend those away too. And if you think you have over blended the color, erase the over blended area and blend the sharp separation again to get it right. That's how you fix over blending. Now let's move on to second blender which is mostly water from watercolor folder. This blender is perfect for creating soft subtle blends that fade away nicely. Start blending the color using one continuous stroke until the color starts to melt away seamlessly. Then use other strokes according to your desire to blend the color softly and the result is awesome. The key difference between these two blending results is that hard charcoal blends colors in texture form allowing for shape molding and smooth blending, while mostly water blender provides smooth faded results without texture or more defined shape definition. Second, don't blend flat. When it comes to blending colors, it's easy to get caught up in a temptation to smoothen out edges. Instead, resist yourself to merely smoothen out edges without a clear direction. Blend with clear direction and purpose. Like my purpose here is to make this heart look like it's inflated. So follow the shape you want to mold and use your blending strokes to cox the colors into forming that shape. Think of it as sculpting with colors. So take your time and blend using different strokes to guide the colors into desired shape. Now this heart doesn't look like it's flat, it has got some shape. It looks a little bit like it's inflated. Third, use transition color. Use transition colors to bridge the gap between hues, creating a seamless flow that molds the shape you desire. By introducing transition colors, you will create a harmonious blend. This harmonious blending will help you achieve a cohesive look and add depth to your artwork. Now look at the difference between using a single color to mold a shape and using transition colors to mold a shape. Fourth, pick good palette. When selecting colors for blending, it is essential to choose colors that harmonize and complement each other. By picking colors that are adjacent to each other on the color wheel or share a similar hue, you will create a smooth gradient-like effect that adds depth and dimension to your artwork. Soft analogous colors are ideal for blending as they share similar lightness and saturation level, making them easier to merge seamlessly. 
In contrast, highly contrasted colors like bright primary colors or pure white and black can be challenging to blend, resulting in unpleasant and unappealing effect and visual tension. Fifth, use layer blending modes. Adding colors to the same layer without utilizing blending modes can lead to a muddy, unrefined results, making it challenging to achieve the desired rendering. Using different blending mode layers can be a game changer. Try using separate layers with the specific blending modes to create more nuanced and polished effect. For example, using multiply layer for adding shadows and a screen or lighten layer for adding light. You can use any blending mode layer here. I'm using according to my personal choice. By combining different blending mode layers, you can selectively control how colors interact with each other, resulting in a more sophisticated and realistic rendering. Last but not least, use selection tool for accuracy. When working on a digital artwork, attempting to add colors and blend them within a specific shape without using any selection tool can be a daunting task. So for blending within a specific shape, you can use any selection tool. I'm using here lasso tool. Now make a selection where you want to add color within a specific area. Lasso tool and other selection tools allow you to define a specific area giving you the control to add colors and blend exactly where you want them, ensuring a polished result. Lasso tool and other selection tools are widely used by professional artists to add colors and blend them within a specific area and also to make their artwork look more eye-catchy and interesting. Let's apply these tips to our illustration. Always use a separate layer for adding your shades. Here I'm using multiply layer for adding shadows. Select lasso tool and make selection where you want to add your dark tones. Then add dark tones within a specific area using soft air brush of large size. After it, smoothen out the edges using one continuous stroke of mostly water blender. Use eraser to maintain a shape. Use other strokes to refine the blending and to mold a shape. And if you think you have over blended the color, you can restore the color using the same selection. Then soften out edges for smooth blending. I'll repeat this process for all the shapes. Use eraser as it helps you in molding a shape and it prevents from over blending. Again, I'm adding color using soft airbrush by making a selection. Use dark color for adding shadows. Now I'm going to add shadows to this red color. I'm using a slightly darker color to add shadows. Then I'll use darker color to add shadows. This way you can create a smooth transition from dark to lighter color. I am using a large size of soft air brush for creating soft edges so that I don't need to blend further. Now for eyes blending you need to follow the circular path as it gives the sense of roundness to your subject. Here I'm using a single stroke of hard charcoal to create a transition color between these two colors. Set the large size of hard charcoal. First I am pulling the latter color into darker color and then I'm going to blend this color to create a transition color between these two. Then I am pulling the transition color into lighter color. Then I will blend the distinct line of lighter color first then I'll move on to dark color distinct line. Okay now, I have made a selection for moustaches and I am adding dark color to the lower part of it. Now I am pulling the darker color into lighter color to create a transition color. Use eraser to remove over blending and then again blend it. 
now add a layer and use blending modes for good rendering. I am using here color blending mode. Now I have selected the face multiply layer and on color blending mode I am going to add color. See the results using different blending mode layers. Now add a layer and this time select hard light. Okay now I am adding shades on hard light layer and blend these. It becomes so easier to shade when you use different blending mode layers to achieve good rendering. And now we are done. Like, subscribe and share.